Through thick and thin. Despite Lucas' bitterness, Gran was right. He needed to hash things out with Rollo. A big fight changes the nature of a friendship. Whether, in the end, it is for the better or for the worse, all comes down to understanding. If one is not careful, the same familiarity that builds the strongest of bonds can become the wrecking ball that shatters them. Luca emerged from seclusion, taking in the crisp festival air. But the events of the day weren't on his mind. He had to find Rollo. Oh, there you are, Luca. I don't want me to tell you something. Roxy rolled her it? eyes, shaking her head. Shaking her head. Uh, a space adventure, though you needn't buy it. If yeah, be brave. Go somewhere quiet. It's a real a goofy little Luca looked down and, down and kicked at the dirt. <laughs> Look, I know you you two had a fight. The only thing more annoying than my little brother is my little brother without his best friend. I'm doing him this one favor. I only need one favor from you. Whatever it is that went down between you two. Oh, stop it. I think. Yeah, I kind of know where it is anyway, so... Okay, it doesn't need to be that loud. Jeff was staring Jeff into the distance with a wistful look. Jeff turned to Luca with a furrowed brow, then gave an understanding nod. For a moment, the two now shared that same wistful gaze. Cool. All right. Hello. Cool. Uh, Kato's eyes lit with excitement. Kato straightened up and cleared his throat as if preparing to sing. Kato stared at Luca eagerly.
Luca grabbed The Adventures of Hank Atomic, issue number five. Luca grabbed The Adventures of Hank Atomic. Luca grabbed. Kato removed his book from the desk and replaced it with Luca's, turning on the lamp. As he slid the book under the purple light, two words glowed The Adventures of Hank Atomic, issue five. Luca clicked his tongue wow. with recognition. <laughs> Kato began flipping through the pages, stopping when he hit a glowing word. He continued flipping. Reaching the end of the book, Kato looked up. Who's Griffin? I forget who Griffin is. Oh, there you go. That's Before Griffin. Luca could finish his sentence, Griffin handed him a corn dog. Luca shrugged, taking a sizable bite out of the corn dog. Luca tongued at his cheeks, feeling something rough between his teeth. He reached into his mouth and pulled out a slip of paper. He shook off the bits of corn dog to read the slip. Luca finished off the remainder of the corn dog. Near the fountain up the step. Oh. Lumi waved his hands around sarcastically as he began. sheepishly handed Luca the balloons.
One second. I don't know if I can't go to the shop tonight. Well, what do you want? I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm not going to do it. Why? I don't mind. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Which one? Yeah. I do have the color. second <coughs> stupid connection here we go oh. can't be asked to do the voice lines at Rollo, hugging him as tightly as he could. I'll be honest with you, I don't think friends that age would hug each other. <laughs> Unless, you know, they have a crush on each other. Anyway. Uh. I forgot how how old these characters are. I mean, they're very short comparing to the adults, so I'm guessing they're quite young. <laughs> so. What are we doing? Oh, I had to do a tree house, okay. This will be easy. Let's go! Woohoo! <laughs> Rollo handed Luca an unopened letter. Luca, some things are going to happen that might be difficult for you to understand. If I am honest, I hardly understand them myself. But whatever happens, I need you to know that I none of this is fair to you. You have already lost so much. We both have. I wish there was a simpler way forward. But if there is, I haven't thought of it. God knows I've tried everything I've done. I did for you. Everything I did. I, totally I hope someday you can accept that. <laughs> Love, Gran. I don't think that's how, how the song goes, but whatever. Luca folded the paper into his pocket and headed up the ladder. 
I'm sorry, but your grand is very suspicious. Luca was at a loss for words. Oh, fuck off, Belly. But that was fine. Belly. Words aren't always necessary. Mm. Sadly, this was untrue. A distant rumble shook the treehouse. It was not fireworks. It was something the boys couldn't possibly comprehend. Something as old and cruel. Is it the people that want Jesus? The fuck? Huh? How? How did that A happen? shockwave of cold tore through the room. A bitter, what? unfathomable chill. Before they could react, it encased them in ice. Two boys, reunited by friendship, only to be cruelly separated by a malevolence Two boys, beyond one reason. Ice. <laughs> and so, our story ends uh, on this melancholy scene. In a silent treehouse turned statuary. In a town brought low mm. by its secrets, sits a pair of friends, alone, together, for the rest of time. The end. No, that can't be the ending. <laughs> it simply can't. No. I won't accept it, and I hope you won't either. Okay. I mean, I would. You know, it's good. All right, I hope you enjoyed that game. Uh, there <laughs> are kidding. more endings, more possibilities. Are you, are you sure? I can feel it. This is a weird kind of meta because it's like you're making a story that has that breaks the fourth wall and makes the writer like go wait where's where's this? We ending are just going though? to have to sort through them all <laughs> until we find the one that fits. We can't just find a bloody oh we can fly now. Oh, we could do that. Oh, we can just do this. Break. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break, revealing patches of star. Patches of star. Audio! Wow! Wait, didn't I know you this? Oh, fuck off, YouTube. In the mid. Uh, beacon. Beacon! Sorry. Sorry. Making sure I haven't done this before. Luca stopped himself mid sentence. <laughs> Luca saw Beck skulking saw by the gate. the wrought iron bars and shook the gate. That's hoid. Oh my gosh. voice was an excited whisper. I mean, I, I, I know who's under that yellow suit anyway. It's my mother. <laughs> well, granny. Because it, it's the most obvious person. Anyway. She's the most suspicious person. 
doctor. It makes sense to be Granny. The mysterious mm. figure mysterious retracted their mask, their mask. Hair pushing out from all corners. Oh, it's Granny! Whoa. A chill ran down Luca's spine. His vision blurred. Beck stifled a sharp wince, and Luca looked down to see himself wrenching her hand. Gran tussled her hair back <laughs> under the face mask. Gran gave Eris a curt nod and disappeared into the night. Chapter 5 What big ears you have! Lucas sat shivering in the bushes. After checking to make sure the coast was clear, Beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater. Finished right. Mr. Nuncreed, arms crossed over his paunch, gave an exhausted sigh. <sighs> he snatched the pad and scribbled his name so hard the pen nearly snapped. The clipboards looked at each other for a moment, almost pondering the possibility, then broke into laughter as they walked away. Get the message from the fucking... Where we go? Oh, tree house. Yeah. William Kerr and Gus Valentine proudly surveyed the half covered festival banner. <laughs> the mayor gave a half hearted shrug. <laughs> arm on Gus's shoulder. <laughs> With a glimmer in his eye, Kerr gestured grandly toward the horizon.
waggled his head with pride. Luca sucked in a long breath. Rollo and Luca shot back a look. Luca gazed out the window. Chapter Secret Lair. Summer forged ahead, but the nights only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. I'm sure I've done this before, right? Yeah. 
Maybe, maybe I didn't. Um, probably, yeah. I play this in my free time. <laughs> That's what I'm confusing it with. Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rolo strutted across the room. Rolo flung open the cabinet with confidence. He coughed as a veil of dust hit his face. crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. Before he could finish, Luca scrambled up Rolo's back. The three crowded around the hutch to peer in. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss, but the only distinct feature was its impeccability. As Beck pulled on one of the teacups, it slanted forward with a hollow click. The entire hutch began to rustle and slide under its own power. Luca jostled each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. He fingered through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. For a long moment, he just stared at it. Luca nodded and caressed the label with his thumb. Rollo swiped the folder from the drawer and began leafing through the pages. He whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. He stopped at a page and mimed, holding up a monocle. Rolo looked up with heightened surprise. Rollo's finger traced across the page. Rollo scanned through several more pages. Luca, staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. Rollo rustled the folder, trying to lose more pages. Luca frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Luca slammed the drawer shut. A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. Oh. 
Rollo casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. He smacked his lips. Rollo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Rollo offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. They crowded around a worn down old map of Beacon Pines. Rollo carefully traced the path with his finger. He jabbed down at the end point. Luca looked up from the map. Beck flicked off the light, and they became statues in the dark. Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. The kids looked up, the tilt of their necks following each footfall. Then suddenly, suddenly, it stopped. It stopped. Without realizing, Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. Holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily. A muffled male voice broke the silence. A final few footsteps reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down the stairs. The three kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. As he began to thump, 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 thump. At the bottom step, the man paused squinting to search the room for signs of life. Rolo shifted suddenly. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look. And we look. It was too. Rolo was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. With all his weight, Rolo tackled the man to the ground. From the dark corner, they saw something move. They saw something move. Luca scrambled to the hunched scrambled figure on the ground, the pressing his fingers to the man's neck. To the man's neck. He, sighed with relief. he sighed with relief. As Beck flicked back, on the, light, flicked back on the light, Luca and Rollo both gasped in stereo. Gasped in stereo. Chapter 7, The Chapter Interrogation seven. of Hiram Tolliver. One sec, I'll be right back.
think I'm gonna hit. Uh, I think I'm gonna curse him, man. I don't know. Did I? Still unconscious, Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. His hands were bound with rope, his feet tied with some loose string. The kids huddled in a circle, discussing their plan. One thing was certain, they couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. They needed to know what he was doing in Luca's house. After some deliberation, it was decided. They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop interrogation. Luca walked calmly to the light switch, flicking it off and on a few times. Mr. Tolliver shook his head, gathering his wits. He looked over to find Luca, who returned a calming grin. Rollo and Beck emerged from hiding to give a timid wave. Luca glanced over to Rollo and Beck, who replied with skeptical looks. Mr. Tolliver exhaled with disappointment. Luca gestured to the corner. Luca looked again to Rollo and Beck. This time they shrugged. Luca began to slowly loosen the bindings. Mr. Tolliver gently rubbed his wrists. He edged imperceptibly toward the stairs as he spoke. Before the kids had even noticed his movement, Mr. Tolliver was at the light switch. He punctuated his final words by flicking the switch and rushing up the stairs. Beck darted to the wall and turned back on the lights. It was too long. Rolo confirmed what they all heard. Mr. Tolliver's muffled voice came from behind the door. They looked bewildered at each other. They heard the staccato thump of quick steps exiting the house. The kids looked down in resignation. This isn't how it goes in Hank Atomic. For some reason, they'd always assumed it was up to them to save their town. Luca opened his mouth, hoping to conjure some magical words to make this right. Bro, you're kids. You're not gonna- Only a hollow croak escaped. And... Well, we certainly aren't going to find a grand resolution to our tale locked in a basement. Back to the drawing board. Let's do some flighting. Flight. Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Flight. He squinted down the barrel of the mission control defense cannon, aiming it through an opening in the dense tree branches. He looked up with surprise as it struck true and taut. Luca 
and Iggy winced as they sprinted through the thicket. The branches clawed at them, reluctant to give passage. After what felt like a marathon, Luca stopped in his tracks as they reached the clearing. What the? That was all he was able to say before Iggy slammed into his back. The boys tumbled down a steep decline and crashed with a wheezing thud on a... In fact, it was ice. Chapter 5. Signs. They stood silently, catching their breath. The sky was like sapphire. With each breath, a plume of steam escaped from Luca's lungs. Let's keep moving. Luca pulled Iggy to his feet as they gazed across a snowy terrain. Luca had almost forgotten the walkie-talkie he was carrying. Luca looked at Iggy with hesitation. With a resigned sigh, Luca responded. Luca winced, shoving the walkie-talkie back into his pocket. A disk of smooth metal was lightly covered in snow. Two faint seams were visible along the surface. The boys Pines. stared in disbelief at the sign that now clearly read, <laughs> Welcome to Beacon Pines. <laughs> the fencing listened each chain link encapsulated with a translucent layer of ice. Looking down at the frozen stream, Luca could faintly see a school of minnows encased in the ice. The crunching of footsteps trailing Luca went hush. He looked back to see Iggy's face twisted with confusion. Luke appeared upward at the darkening sky. He let out a long, foggy breath. Faintly, Iggy began to cry. Seeing Iggy in such a pathetic state gave Luca a sense of compassion and more than a little guilt. Luca allowed himself to collapse next to Iggy. 
The boys huddled together for warmth and comfort. If not for exhaustion, their minds would be racing, trying to make sense of the events of the day. As it was, all they had energy for was to sit in silence, numb. Iggy motioned sarcastically to his half-deformed face. Iggy shrugged. Iggy now wept openly. He wiped his nose with a sleeve. Luca gave a warm chuckle. Iggy cleared his throat as he wiped his eyes. Iggy arched into a wide yawn. Luca's eyelids began to slowly drift shut. That's all Luca could whisper before succumbing to sleep. Iggy snuggled in some more. The house smelled of warm bread. Luca was playing with toy blocks on the living room rug. He looked up to see his parents on the couch. His mother held his father's head in her lap. She idly stroked his hair while humming a song. A voice behind Luca spoke. This is how you remember them, huh? Luca turned to see his own face. The doppelganger from his dreams still clad in a yellow hazmat suit, still carrying a look of disdain behind empty eyes. Aww, look at this perfectly cozy scene. You know it wasn't really like this. The figure picked up a toy block and inspected it. It's amazing the facades that one can build given the right materials. Not that I blame us. These are a child's memories, all warm and fuzzy. You don't remember. Luca snatched the block from the figure's yellow gloved hand. Remember what? The doppelganger pointed to the couch. The last day we saw him alive. The day he chose to abandon us. Luca turned to look at his father, still lounging on the couch. That's not true. He didn't abandon us. The doppelganger waved his hand dismissively. Everything is true here. It's just a matter of what we choose to see. Well, let me show you. The world flickered in pulse. Luca was sitting next to his bed, listening to his heartbeat with one of his dad's stethoscopes. The doppelganger limped into the room. Now, now. We both know that's not how this went. He grabbed Luca's hand and guided the stethoscope <sighs> to the floor. Luca heard muffled shouting, brought close by the stethoscope. It was his parents, fighting. Do you remember what we did next? Luca gave a slow nod and crept down the hall to peek through the banister. He could see the outline of his mother at the bottom of the stairs. Damn it, Walt. We can't afford to get involved in this. She was scared. His father stepped forward. What am I supposed to do? Just watch? There's a sickness in this town and we both know who's behind it. I swore an oath to help people. I won't turn my back on them. Luca's mother grabbed Walt. She was crying, pleading. I can't lose you. Walt calmly removed Eleanor's hand from his shoulder. What's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. I could never live with myself if I let Sharper get away with this. Eleanor raised her voice. Spare me your bullshit platitude. What about our son? Luca flinched, dropping the stethoscope down the stairs. Walt turned with a panicked smile. Luca, is that you, buddy? With tears in his eyes, Luca descended the stairs. Mom? Dad? What's going on? Walt dropped to a knee to meet Luca eye to eye. Nothing, buggeroo. Your mom and I just got a little overexcited is all. Luca placed the stethoscope against his father's chest. His heart was racing. It sounded like you were going somewhere. Walt gently removed the device from Luca's ears. Listen to me, Luca. I have some 
business to take care of. I'll be back in time to tuck you in. Luca hugged his father tightly. Promise? Walt stood up and walked to the door. He glanced over his shoulder. I promise. With a wink and a grin, he put on his hat and strode out into the evening sun. A figure approached soundlessly from the foggy snowfall. It stood above them, lingering in contemplation. Slowly raising one hand above Iggy, it snapped out two brisk wraps on his head. From a deep slumber, Iggy sprang up defensively. Whether it was the calming presence or the recognition that he was not in danger, Iggy felt his clenched fists lower. Luca looked up, gradually remembering his whereabouts. The figure exhaled a cloud of warm vapor. When it came to complete strangers, Iggy had trouble cobbling together an insult. Iggy huffed with gratification. Nat began to turn away indifferently. Iggy turned sharply and began to stomp off. Realizing he'd worn their patience then, Luca and Iggy turned around with hope in their eyes. Nat took a deep breath in. Nat exhaled slowly, then snapped his fingers. For a brief moment, Luca and Iggy let themselves believe that some great magic was about to unfold until they opened their eyes and found themselves in the exact same place, cold and disheartened. Replica City. his eyes, furrowed his brow, and uttered. Luca began to laugh uncomfortably. He looked down at his feet. His eyes started back and forth in contemplation. With a sudden pain, a thought struck him. He sprinted off into the pale distance. As Iggy turned to follow, Nat called out. Nat expressed his sympathy with a shrug and sauntered off as unassumingly as he'd arrived. He'd given Luca and Iggy what they needed, and nothing more. As Luca sprinted across the snow, the events of the past few days became clearer, pieces to a larger puzzle. Rollo said he was underground somewhere, captured. Mr. Kerr tried to cover it up with lies. The clipboards were hell-bent on capturing Iggy. It all seemed to be right now. There was one thing that Luca needed to know. 
Luca stopped dead in his tracks. The tree was gone, uprooted and moved, leaving a raw gash in the earth. He dropped to his knees and dug wildly at the cold snow. His numb hands hit something hard, a headstone. A dry whisper oh, escaped Luca's lips. One second, I'm just gonna get my dinner. There was no reply, just snow-covered silence. Iggy finally noticed the tears welling in Luca's eyes and the snow-covered grave. Suddenly, they heard the crunch of approaching footsteps in the snow. to scoop up a snowball and lobbed it playfully. Hold on. I know this could be a spoiler at the end of the game, but I'm wondering if that's us in the future. Maybe. It has to be, it has to be us, right? Luca stuttered through heaving sobs. Luca a solid smack on the back of his head. Yeah. 
Luca wiped his eyes with a sleeve. Iggy flashed a mischievous smile and cracked his knuckles. Iggy and Luca shared a skeptical look. Iggy darted behind a large pine and began digging furiously. He emerged holding a shoebox with a crude skull painted on its lid. Luca rolled his eyes with realization. Iggy stifled a chuckle. Oh, shit. Oh. Iggy triumphantly raised the shoebox. Oh, shit. Ugh. Oh, shit. Luca and Iggy inched up to the edge of the hole with bewilderment in their eyes. Arctic air breathed out of the cavern in heaving gusts. <laughs> it's right under the fountain. Uh -huh. Oh, hello. Yeah, probably is. Mr. Kerr gazed down the abyss in contemplation. Kerr scratched the back of his head. His face contorted into a saccharine grin. Kerr snapped his fingers. Iggy turned to Luca with oh, a sly sure. glance. Iggy waved the box into the air, threatening to drop it down the hole. 
Peggy plucked a single bottle rocket from the box and held it up with reverence. After a long pause, Mr. Kerr flung up his hand with frustration. Mr. Kerr sighed into the frigid air. With a nonchalant flick, Eggie tossed the firework into the hole. <sighs> With a growl, Kerr leapt at Iggy, crashing uh -oh. through Luca. Iggy tried to twist away, but in the struggle, they both tumbled over the side. Luca dove forward, bracing Iggy's hand just before it slipped. His grip was made precarious by the cold, wet snow. He could see Kerr further down, clinging to Iggy's coat. Mr. Carr gasped with insult. With a wild look in his eye, Mr. Kerr began to hum a proud melody. Luca's hand began to cramp. His voice began to crack. Luca felt Iggy loosen his grasp. Every muscle in Luca's body burned. Luca felt his hand slipping. A calm settled over Iggy's face. Iggy's voice was colder than the bitter air billowing from the chasm. Luca had no choice but to accept Iggy's request. With a quiet blink, oh, Luca should, watched a teardrop sail bad. down into the howling void. No, I'm gonna leave it there. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>